I'm here with Paul from unfairlaws.com. What's going on, Paul? How are you today? I'm good and you. How about good, you, good. bro? Not bad. Excellent, man. Nice having you in the booth. Oh, this is awesome. Like, okay, I've never seen these laws before, and I have to say, these are some really, really impressive laws. This, this, the gill plate you have hanging out and everything. I'm like, I've never seen anything about like this at all. So, take talk me through these laws. Like, what is it? <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, a very important thing, and I, and I need to remain humble in, in, in what I tell you, but. I was so sick and tired of fishing with junk baits all my life. Right. You know, a boat console with 40 lures on the console that I decided to quit whatever we had in South Africa. We sold everything in South Africa. We moved here to the United States right. to the Star Spangled Banner, which we've grown to really love and love the people in America. But I designed these baits for myself. <clears throat> and I'm just being real with you. It might right. sound selfish, but. You know, instead of going fishing with a box of hope in this hand and a box of maybe in that right. hand, I now fish with a fanny pack with about maybe half a dozen or a dozen baits in it. And I can cover every situation that I could come across. So I can cover if the fish are chasing mullet. Gotcha. Or if For I'm instance. bass fishing, yes sir. Or if I'm bass fishing, you know, and the bass are, are, are feeding on, on uh, shad or, or, or right. herring, I've got something to cover that situation. Or if I'm fishing on the flats, you know, somewhere where there's oyster bars, redfish and speckled trout, snook, etc. I've got a shrimp that works exactly like a living shrimp, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Okay. But basically, I wanted to come and bring my collected knowledge of over 500 different species on artificials, 368 on a fly rod. I wanted to bring that knowledge to the fishing industry and turn most guys' hopeful days into a successful day. So we mixed a few things. One, um, I wanted to make sure that the baits were accessible to new and incumbent, you know, new fishermen. So our baits are all pretty much pegged at under ten dollars retail. That's fantastic. You know, and, and yeah, and then obviously the dealer has has a cut out of that. But you know, we weren't greedy on the on the uh, on, on the, uh, uh, the manufacturing and the cost uh, side ourselves. So we, we figured, you know, if we want to make a lot of money, we've got to sell a lot of plugs, and, and that's where, what we're about. So I can go through the different plugs with you um, one by one, if that's good for you. Sure, I'd like to see actually that shrimp you were talking about. All righty, okay, so we'll start with my shrimp. Now the shrimp, I'll show you just in a nutshell quickly. The shrimp has eyes that move. Okay. Looks like a real shrimp. Now the, what I wanted to achieve with this shrimp was if there's a trout or a redfish or a snook or any fish that eats shrimp right. underneath this, and I pull this over the top of a, a fish, when he looks up, number one, he's seeing an exact mold of a living shrimp. So he's satisfied that that is a shrimp, okay. albeit that it's ABS plastic. And you'll notice too that the line attaches underneath the tail. Gotcha, I see that. So the most important thing about that, and it's covered under two different patterns, is that when you operate the shrimp, the tail digs upwards, kind of like a crankbait lip would dig down. Okay. So this shrimp, when you pop him in the water, he dives forward, he glides like an aircraft landing. But the moment you pop the rod tip, he backs up. So you'll be able to see that in the tank right over here. Okay, I'm going to pop him in the tank and you'll see him dive forward. Okay. I'll do it again. Just pop him lightly in the tank, he dives forward. But when you pop the line, you'll see he scoots backwards and upwards like a startled shrimp. Sure. Any shrimp feeds slowly forward, but when he's chased, he backs up, he shoots backwards and upwards. Okay. Now the cool thing about the shrimp is you can use them as a topwater, not only as a, a subsurface search bait, but you can walk the dog down a flat with the shrimp. So you walk him on the surface, his tail's out the water and you suspend him. Walk him and suspend him. And I've seen it dozens and dozens of times when this shrimp goes over the top of a trout or a redfish or any predatory fish it's game over so we have a, a smaller shrimp which matches the hatch mm. in um, in certain waters like you know in the gulf coast area and then we have some select shrimp you know the nice bigger ones sure. which are awesome for dock fishing at night because you can manipulate the angle of the tail so you, you can get him to to dive to the right or you can just tap his tail and he dives to the left that's got to be great for snooking under the docks they too. They are phenomenal yeah. baits. And we also have a super fast sinking one which does 50 feet in about 8 seconds. Wow, so for wreck yeah. fishing, for cobia under um, rays and that sort of thing, triple tail, we can about cover every situation. And it looks so accurate that when a fish sees this thing it just plows it. 
got to be some violent strikes. I like the yes, Milo sir. that you added too. Just got a little bit of yes, flash sir. No, when well, things pop and that little. It does, but the important thing about the Milo, and I'm glad you noticed that, is when we pop and retrieve the shrimp, the Milo puts the hook under the head. So when the strike takes place, the hook points sure. are in the mouth. Right, right. You get spot. a sure hook set, left or right, every time. Right, sure yeah, hook absolutely. set. A lot of baits tend to hook fish on the outside of the head, and when they turn, they're gone. But this little guy, he retails for eight dollars ninety-nine. Wow. Which is a reasonable very price, very absolutely. Sure. And the bigger brother is nine dollars ninety-nine. Yeah, it's very affordable. And they come fitted with our outside barb PVR turbo set hooks. It has a barb on the outside for a sixty percent quicker hook set, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, now these hooks are yours too. Yes, sir. We designed them and we patented them ourselves. Oh. Yep. Very cool. There we go. Now we have our mullet. Now. This is probably one of the most premier baits all over the world for the live bait guys. You know, guys netting mullet for live bait. You know, this, I took a live mullet, never been done before. Some other bait companies out there have mullet, they paint it beautifully. <laughs> but the key problem is that when you retrieve this under the water, and, and this is one of the things I need to explain, and that is a fish, small fish, you can catch on a Budweiser cap and a treble hook. You can catch them on a piece of banana peel and a jiggy. They're mm. stupid. They, that's why they end up in a skillet. <laughs> but your bigger fish, your smart fish, like this uh, weak fish over there or speckled trout, you'll notice one thing. This fish, as an education, how to catch bigger fish consistently, he hunts in stereo with both his eyes. Now you might think, well, duh, but every picture you see, you see only one eye on a fish. Right. So you start thinking in a monodimensional manner, but these fish hunt in stereo for what they know. And secondly, as a safeguard for himself, he uses his lateral line to identify if this sonic signature is correct. So when you throw this mullet next to this uh, speckled trout or redfish or striper or snook or whatever, number one, when he sees the profile, he immediately knows what it is. But the most important is when you retrieve this underwater, the sonic signature or the pulse it gives off identifies with its lateral lines that it's correct. So it checks two vital boxes. Right. One, it looks right. Two, it sounds well, right. Good. The That's next the thing signal. is plow. It. Electrical impulses. Yeah, it's like, that it's like when we go down to the barbecue. You know, if you order nice spare ribs and a waitress brings you chicken wings, you don't want to eat it's them. No good. <laughs> or if the spare ribs come and you smell them and they smell bad, you ain't going to eat them. Sure. You see, so, so at the you're, end you're of the day, you're triggering all the senses. This law is going to trigger all the senses. That's on that what fish. unfair lures is all about, man. I was sick and tired of fishing with a, a box of hope or a box of maybe or a box of sometime. Sure. You know, that's why I designed them for myself. You'll notice the unfair lures. I'm just going to step over to the, to the tank again. <clears throat> All unfair lures come with a swivel on the front. We don't put a split ring there because I've had too many fish lost in my life and lures lost, expensive lures, with a line coming out of a split ring. That is a 130 pound stainless steel swivel, specifically manufactured for us. And the smaller baits, the little smaller ones have a 95 pound stainless swivel on them. No split rings no, for no. us. There's some interesting technology on the front, it's patent pending. You'll notice the wires on unfair lures are transverse. They're actually sideways instead of upright. Yeah, I see that. Now, now an upright wire, if that wire is slightly bent, your lure doesn't track straight, it, it washes out left or right. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we turned the washing out left and right, we turned it 90 degrees. So this lure will swim slightly down if it's bent or slightly up, but it'll always track straight. Okay. So we bring this technology to you, the fishermen, so that you guys can have an awesome day. Then, instead of a bit of red paint on the side of the plug, which you can't see when you're tracking it, we bring you the first patented bleeding gill on the market. When you operate this plug and you suspend an unfair lure, the gill actually twinkles in the, in, in the current, uh, just the, uh, the wash, and it gives the illusion of a spent bait. Right. So that's just another little added tip. The wires are transverse on the back of Unfailure, so you can fish a single hook. You take the treble off, you put a single on, and the chain link is, is, is completed. That's an amazing looking lure. Yeah, they're it's beautiful really lures. They're really strong in their design. This plug has about a 110 pound pull, pull strength. Wow. No need for through wire on it. And uh, so that is our mullet. The unfair mullet comes in different sizes. 
And we're introducing our new cutting point treble hooks with a barb on the outside. Yep, we saw that. Pattern painting. An important thing to show you on these hooks, they're so sharp that if you simply put them on your finger, and I roll my finger, and I roll it, and I roll it, and I roll it, and I roll it, this bad boy just holds on, and holds on, and holds on, eventually falls off. Sure. Actually <laughs> cuts his way out of my skin. So it's a cutting point hook. I also, I mean, the finish too, like, the, the finish is really nice on these lures. You know, on top of everything else, but just, the whole lure is definitely a complete lure. Awesome. Like you said, the swivels, the hooks, the gills that are coming out, the finish, it's, just, it's really a beautiful, beautiful product. You know, the nice thing too is, is it gives you a lot of confidence when you put it on your rod. It just gives you confidence out of the bat. You know? Sure. You know, when I go fish, and, and sometimes, um, you know, I'm fishing with a lot of, of guides, charter captains, and people that, you know, invite me to go fishing. And they see I come on board with a, with a small little package and they want to know where my fishing box is, you know. And at the end of the day, I end up sharing all my product anyway. But here's an important bait for us. The shad. Or herring. Exact mold of a living shad. So when the fish are on shad, you've got the correct profile, you've got the correct sonic signature. And we've done something really unique for the bass folks. This little shad, the little smaller one, has weight transfer technology inside the little BBs in the belly. When you pick them up to cast them, the weights fall in the tail. Okay. So now, instead of getting a crankbait and pulling it down towards the fish, which essentially is a prey item chasing a predator, which is wrong, hmm. this little guy, you can drop him wow. into the zone. When the bass see this, they know it's a, a, a shad. The profile is not something they need to be afraid of. The first flick of the rod tip transfers the weights into the That's belly, now he's a fish. So you have a parabolic curve down to your bait. As it sinks, it pulls your line down. Four or five twitches, this little bait goes in an upward direction, which is the direction a fish wants to chase any bait. Sure, up. up is the way no. bait flees, and you <coughs> suspend them down. So the cool thing is, this is zigzagging your strike zone, where most crankbaits will go into the strike they're, zone and below. Sure, they're, and if they're a crank, digging. And if a crankbait ends up below your bass, they're two zip codes away, they're gone. So this little guy is a fish fooling tool, but we got them in a wide range of colors too, you know, so... Uh, you see most fish feed on upwards. Yes, like sir. Going on an exactly. Upwards thing. So this is the little uh, pearl olive shad in a different color. That's nice. But nice the weight little. transfer technology, yes, yeah, they're, they're great baits, man. You know, we've... It's beautiful. I brought these baits out so that I never need to have egg on my face and I never need to be embarrassed. Right. You know, when I put this in a guy's hands, I had a kid in Louisiana last week uh, take some of my baits. He was very skeptical sponsored by some of the major bait companies. He's on the state uh, bass team, mm. the high school team. He took one of my shads and he fishes in a pond behind his house. He said to me, I've never caught bass bigger than a pound in a pond. That's pretty much what's in there. And he came next day with a smile as wide as a Halloween pumpkin, man. And he said to me, check what I caught. And he showed me this picture. He said in three casts, he caught two four pounders. Oh, wow. He's sold. <laughs> so, you know, that's a little bit about unfair lures. Um, we're based out of Florida, but then we're growing and we're excited. We, uh, we're looking for dealers all over and uh, we've got a great dealer program. We don't do too much advertising in magazines because we find it's a little bit dead money. But what we like to do though is get involved in dealers and pro staff and things like that where guys write and get on Instagram and Facebook. Sure, absolutely, and, that's the way to do it. Yeah, so we, we, we're very excited and, but yeah. One of these things also, it's, I'm sure it's the same thing. Like you could use this lure basically in the salt or in the fresh. It doesn't matter. They're, they're absolutely good for both situations. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, for inshore fishing, they're awesome. For saltwater fishing, like we've got um, our arrowhead over here, cutting point hooks again with freshwater colors on them. Mm -hmm. So you've got a bit of orange on the bottom. Yeah, see that one? But then again, you could take this, cast to the salt, later on go to the pond, absolutely. and use the same lure in the fresh, absolutely. no problem. No need for two different lure boxes. That's crazy. Cutting point hooks again, you know, once again, if I drop him over, and I keel him over and keel him over, he just holds right. and holds and holds and holds. And again, that so, finish, that's incredible. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, on, on our newer painted baits, it's an interesting thing. You know, with the EPA, you know, going after, you know, environmental, the unfriendly stuff, our new baits have a water-based paint and also water-based varnishes that cure with ultraviolet light. Mm -hmm. In 30 seconds, this one is ready to fish. From the time that we start painting it to the time we put the varnish over it, 30 seconds, it's ready to roll. It's all ultraviolet cured water-based paint. And you have, I mean, 
a lot of those don't have. You have actually scales in here. You can see each correct, one, yes, each so individual yeah. scale. We, we have a printer that actually we can upload an image into the printer and we and can put it right on. Exactly what we want on there. Yeah, right it's, there. it's a beautiful lore. It really is. It's very impressive. Like I said, I've never seen these before yeah, until man. today. So, yeah, so I'm definitely going to try them out. We're wildly excited. And, this uh, is fun, definitely. We, wanna, we, we want you guys to get your mojo on. Oh, we'll definitely get our mojo on. <laughs> hey, thanks for stopping by. When you're on Long Island, you got to come fish us. Promise. Promise. You come with us. I promise you. I promise you. Thank you, Paul. Thank Thanks you very, very much, sir. Have a good day.